Hi you guys! So, I've never done a video like this before. So I got the idea for this video because I actually got an email the other night from a girl who was, I think, a senior in high school and she wants to start freelancing and doing makeup and, you know, eventually making money off of it and she was asking me for some advice. The first thing I want to tell you guys is that I did not go to school for makeup. I did go to cosmetology school. Now, we think cosmetology school, cosmetics, but cosmetology school doesn't mean you're going to school to learn how to do makeup. It means you're going to school to either learn how to do hair or to get into the esthetician program. And a lot of people think that when you're going to go to cosmetology school, they're going to teach you how to do makeup. And like, yes, they teach you the very basics. All it is is that you have one little chapter on makeup, and it's honestly almost a joke, in my opinion, at least at the school I went to. Um, and I knew getting into it that I wasn't going to learn anything about makeup, which is fine. You know, I'm not saying I know everything, but like, I didn't go for that. So, I even taught one of my classes. Um, I was putting makeup on the teacher and like teaching people how to like highlight and contour, I think. It was pretty fun. Anyway, so um, the way I learned is by practicing by being on YouTube and by watching other people do makeup, you guys. That's the best way I explain it. So I, in a way, yes, I am self-taught, but for the most part, I've been my biggest guinea pig. When I first started, I went to CoastalSense.com because everybody was talking about Coastal Sense on YouTube, and this was like in 2008, and um, I went online and everything was so cheap. I haven't been on that website in so long, but I'm pretty sure everything is still pretty affordable. They have blush palettes, concealer palettes, contouring palettes. There are so many places online that you can find these palettes that have a bunch of different colors and they are pretty pigmented, they're easy to carry around, and it's a great way to start your kit. And what's nice about these palettes is that most of the time they are all black, so they look pretty professional. I made the mistake of buying like a ton of liquid foundation when I first started, and I just recently threw away like a bag of of old foundations that I never even touched. When I first started doing makeup, I noticed that a lot of people wanted me to use their foundation, and you'd be surprised because you would think that, you know, when people want to get their makeup done, that they want you to use all of your stuff, but I've had so many people, you know, bust out their foundation and they're like, oh, here's my foundation, like, can you use it? And I'm like, okay, that's fine. So I just think that because foundation is pricey, that should be the last thing you buy, believe it or not, you're better off getting a really good um, concealer palette and um, a translucent powder and investing in that because you're going to be using that a lot more and I've noticed that a lot of people do really well with just concealer and translucent powder on top. So that's just my personal opinion, you guys. You don't have to listen to me, but that's just what I think. I think that when you're first starting, just tell people that you'll be using their foundation. And either way, they should be okay with it because when you're first starting, you shouldn't charge so much. So yeah, make it affordable and that way they can't complain because you're doing it for a really cheap price anyway. So that's fine. Have them use their foundation. So that's what I would say. Unless you're already really comfortable with using foundation, then I would say get some Bare Minerals foundation. And I'm not just saying that because I work for them, you guys. If you already watched my foundation routine, you know that's what I use every day. And that is most definitely what I have in my freelance kit because it's minerals. I have the loose and the compact form. Uh, I mean, it won't expire for a really long time, so I'll have it well, I won't have it forever because I'm going to use it by the time forever comes. Uh, but, you know, it's going to last me a really long time. So, I like to use that. I've never had anybody tell me, oh, I hate this. Get it off my face. So if anything, people are like, oh my gosh, this is only powder, really? There's no liquid foundation on? And I'm like, no. And they love it. So, if you do have the money to invest in foundation, I'd get some bare mineral stuff. If you are going to get the bare minerals, um ready foundation which is actually what I recommend you get first if you're thinking about getting the loose and the ready get the ready first and when I say ready you guys I mean compact that's what we call our compact um, I would get the shades light medium beige medium tan golden tan and golden dark because those are the most common skin tones especially medium beige you want to have medium beige in your um, kit so that's what I'd start off getting if you don't have the money to get like all 20 shades because I think it's 20 shades and that's a lot of money so 
you for sure want to get those colors. I would just start off by getting some drugstore mascara. I mean, it's not really a big deal because either way, if you're doing makeup and you're charging people to do makeup, it's most likely for a special event. And for the most part, people are going to want fake eyelashes. Don't stress out about mascara. Just get something from the drugstore. But make sure that the mascara that you do get, you are not using on yourself. That's the first step to being a professional. You separate your everyday makeup from your kit's makeup, okay? You're gonna wanna get your mascara wands, your spatulas, your lip applicators at Sally's. I mean, that's where I got mine. You can, I don't know where else you can get them. You can probably get them online. You can get everything online. But that's where I first got mine and they're very affordable and it just makes you look more professional, more hygienic and people see you, you know, switching wands. And another thing, those sponge tip applicators might seem like the biggest waste of money, but definitely get one pack. You're not going to use all of them for a very long time. I have my pack in my freelance kit from like three years ago you guys and I haven't touched it but it's just in case somebody has like some kind of eye infection and you don't want to use your makeup brushes you have all the right to not use your makeup brushes on someone's eye if they have an eye infection they shouldn't even be wearing makeup if that's the case but just for whatever reason you always have to be on the safe side have your disposable sponge tip applicators that you could just apply eyeshadow on and that way you can just throw them away right after and it's no big deal for eyeliners and lip liners and this goes for liquid eyeliner. I would get some NYX eyeliners and lip liners. They have them now at Target. Um, you can get them online. Their lip liners are so affordable. They have a ton of colors. I used their liquid eyeliner in my in my cat tutorial. My little cute cat tutorial where I had like purple makeup on. You can check that video out if you want to see what the eyeliner looks like. But I love their very thin liquid eyeliner. I don't know the exact name but it's like so thin and it's awesome. So I recommend that. For fake eyelashes, don't worry about getting anything high end. To this day, I have never showed up at someone's house with like some MAC eyelashes or some, you know, Shoei Mora eyelashes, anything fancy. I've always shown up with like stuff I've gotten at the beauty supply. Why? Because it's still real hair. Um, they go on beautifully. I'm wearing beauty supply eyelashes right now and I love them. For your brush belt, okay, so I got this brush belt from e.l.f years ago you guys when I first started. It was my first brush belt ever and it's really dirty, sorry. It looks like that. It was really really cheap and I'm sure it's still extremely cheap but I love 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 it because it looks very professional. It just says Elf Studio right there. Oh this is so dirty. I'm so embarrassed. Perfect for somebody who is starting out or who's not starting out and you just want a new brush belt. For makeup brushes, when I first started out I got a lot of mine on Coastal Scents and um, Coastal Scents does carry crown brushes and you can also Google crown brushes and look at their brushes as well. Um, they're not going to be like the greatest quality brushes you guys if you're used to like having amazing brushes but they're going to be really good for starting out and if you just want to go ahead and invest a lot of money in MAC brushes then like the more power to you because I love those brushes and they'll also last you a really really long time but for somebody who's first starting um, I know that I didn't have the money to do that, so yeah, I got them at Coastal Scents. Um, my friend who I did her makeup the other day was actually telling me that she got like um, a 20 piece brush set from, what's that thing, Groupon for like 20 something bucks. And that's a great deal too, so now they have stuff like that. If you do want to spend a little bit of more money, but you don't want to spend MAC prices, Go to Target and get some Sonia Kashuk brushes. I love those brushes. They work really, really well. And they have like e.l.f. brushes at Target for like a dollar or two. And, you know, some of them suck. Some of them are good. But my favorite affordable brushes that are similar to MAC brushes are the Sigma brushes. I've had mine for like three years now. They have a lot of different sets that are different prices, and I haven't been on that website in so long, I'll be completely honest, but I know that if you're willing to spend like a hundred bucks on makeup brushes, which is actually what I recommend doing so that you don't waste so much money on these cheap little brushes that you're going to end up throwing away because I've had my Sigma brushes for so long, for a hundred bucks you can get a lot of really good brushes, and they look very professional. They have like different colors, they have purple, they have pink, they have the, you know, the classic black, so 
definitely check them out. I like them a lot. So after you have all of that and you're ready to go, you're not necessarily ready to like take on everybody's makeup just yet. Um, if you haven't practiced, you guys, you need to practice, 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 practice on your mom, your sister, your cousins. A lot of people will be super supportive and will want you to practice on them because who doesn't want like a free little makeover, right? I'll be honest, I made the mistake of like not practicing on as many people as I could before I had my first client and I didn't tell my first client that she was my first client. It was this girl, I was doing her makeup for prom. Of course, I'm not going to be like, hi, I've never done this before and I'm doing your makeup for prom. You know, I just kind of like went along with it, but I was really, really nervous. It took me like forever to gather my stuff and... I was a mess. You want to order business cards. I got my business cards on vistaprint.com and they weren't anything fancy. I wish I had one of them so I could show you guys. They were just like whatever. If you know somebody who goes to like your old high school or something or whatever, if you have access to high schoolers, for sure give them some of your business cards because prom rolls around and that's when I get my busiest, around prom time. So um, yeah, those are really important people to have contact you. How much to charge? When I first started and I was officially charging people, I would charge them 40 to get their makeup done and for prom I would do like this prom special where I would charge people $30. Now that was like four years ago. So my prices have gone up. Not too much, but they've gone up. And um, yeah, I guess it all depends on what you feel comfortable charging, what you think you deserve. Work really hard, believe in yourself. Don't listen to anybody who says you can't make a decent living off of doing makeup. We live in an extremely vain society, you guys, and people always want to look their best. And it's a great feeling to like have somebody who you can tell kind of doesn't feel so good about themselves and then you just like maybe add a few little things that really, you know, bring out their features and then suddenly they have like all the confidence in the world. That's the best part about doing makeup. So if you have any lovely tips or advice for anybody who is starting out their freelance journey as a makeup artist, please comment below. I would love to read it myself because maybe I forgot to mention something or maybe there's something I don't know and you guys could help me with. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!